Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today I went out and got comic books because it's Wednesday and that's what I do on Wednesdays uh, if I have any money. And uh, today I picked up for Venom stuff or Carnage and Symbiote stuff, I picked up Go Down Swingin' Part 1, which is in Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 797. So this is uh, the Green Goblin bonding with the Carnage Symbiote and a big moment happens. Something that might even undo, maybe, I don't even know, uh, a deal that uh, Peter Parker once made with Mephisto. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm jumping maybe too far into it. I have to really read this. I flipped through it and accidentally spoiled the ending for myself. So I got to go back and read it and see if I can make more sense out of it. Because uh, right now my mind's going like a, a million miles a minute. Um, then I also picked up for a dollar the True Believers issue. This is only one dollar. Uh, Venom vs. Spider-Man and it's a reprint of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 300, which is the first appearance of Venom, as you can see in here, their big battle. Uh, which is awesome, right on the church. So yeah, Todd McFarlane artwork, beautiful. And speaking of Todd McFarlane stuff, I think uh, in a couple weeks, if the movie news doesn't pick up, I might drop the Venom vlog to maybe just three or four episodes a week. And then we're gonna do the Scarlet Spider show. And that's gonna be like one episode every two weeks. And then I think I'm gonna also do uh, Spawn. And we're gonna talk about Spawn once every two weeks. And then we'll, as we get closer to the Spawn reboot movie, we'll add more episodes and stuff like that. But uh, we'll keep Venom vlog going. Uh, the best I can right now but if there's no movie news I don't want to just keep talking comics with you guys as much as I love it I do want to talk mostly about the movie as well so uh, if hopefully we get movie news soon and I can uh, share more of that stuff with you guys uh, hopefully and then we talked about it you know WonderCon's coming up so if they release something at WonderCon hopefully that gives us like a couple episodes of stuff to work with uh, but if we start slowing down on movie news because Sony's like you know just trying not to leak too much about this movie if they're gonna play it like that then I'm gonna have to compensate and drop down to just uh, you know three episodes a week but don't worry I'll still do stuff for you guys and if you're a Spawn fan we'll do Spawn stuff uh, which will be fun uh, the last thing and I'm gonna give away the digital code right here this is the conclusion to Poison X uh, the X-Men Spider-Man or the X-Men Venom crossover and uh, it's the first time these teams like the like the X-Men have ever crossed over with Venom and to me I would have rather it been like the original X-Men not the like five kids uh like that are from like out of time or whatever is going on uh and I think Colin Bunge is usually good I loved uh Venomverse and his the art um from Ebon Coelho was great but this book it just hasn't sold me to be honest with you I I'm not really digging it too too much I think there's some fun moments in it but ultimately I just want Venomized to come out now because I want to see Ebon's art uh go crazy and I want to see him draw like all the Marvel characters and the poisons again uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm not really feeling this story. Plus it was called Poison X and they didn't even show up till the, like the very last page of the last issue. And so now this is a whole issue with the minute and they'll set up the Venomized story. So if you do want the second part of Colin Bunn's trilogy, you know, go pick these up. Uh, they're still, there's still fun moments in them. And to be fair, I haven't read this last issue yet and I didn't even flip through it. So hopefully, you know, when I flip through this and read it, I'll, you know, put my foot in my mouth and I'll end up liking the ending. So that, and that's entirely possible. Colin Bunn has done that to me before. So Anyway, yeah, first person to put that digital code in gets this comic, and we'll talk more about it uh, once it's, you know, in a couple weeks maybe when, you know, now that all of them are out, I'll reread them all the way through and maybe we'll do a review or something at some point. Um, and then, yeah, and I got some other comics here, but I'll show them another time. I got to get into work, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, what we're going to talk about next is the Venom storyline coming out in May, uh, the Venom number one, which I think is advertised on the back of one of my books. Uh, let's see, yeah, right here, uh, we have the, the cover 30th anniversary, everything. So let's talk about this storyline and uh, an interview that I read in previews, like the free previews uh, monthly book that Marvel gives out for free at comic stores. So let's get right into that. All right, we're back inside and we're gonna take a look at uh, Marvel previews. So if you want, go pick this up at your local comic store. It's issue eight and this is merchandise for May of 2018. And these are free. I think you can pick these up for free at your local comic store. And they're a pretty decent sized magazine. And what they'll do is they'll show you all the Marvel stuff coming out, well not all of it, but at least a good chunk of the Marvel stuff coming out, you know, two months from now, and it'll have like cool little interviews in here and exclusive stuff. Now some of these images, they actually did find them online uh, after, I, you know, after I did a little bit more digging, and I saw Bleeding Cool posted these images, so I'll probably put a link to them down below, so you can check out uh, Bleeding Cool News for these images, but I'm gonna, I'll, we'll take a look at those images in a second. First I want to talk about the interview in here, it's just a three question interview with Donny Cates, uh, who is the writer of the upcoming book book starting in May 
and then also the artist Ryan Stegman. And uh, the first question was, what were the challenges of creating of creating a new Venom story, particularly for a character who has 30 years of history? And Donnie Cates says, uh, well, first, let's backtrack a bit. I started reading Venom comics when I was three years old. So when I first read that, I, I actually kind of said bullshit out loud. Like, not that I would suspect anyone of lying about something like that, but I was just like, three years old, a Venom comic? Like, when, I mean, obviously he has a different parent than I did. Uh, when I read Craven's Last Hunt at, like, six years old, my mom forbid me to read Spider-Man because that book ended with a suicide. And she was like, you cannot uh, read any more uh, Spider-Man comic books if they're going to deal with stuff like this. And it wasn't until years later when I was a little bit older and then Carnage came about that my uncle got me those Carnage issues and I started getting back into Spider-Man right before the Clone Saga. So, um, so yeah, and then I had to go back and read about Venom and figure out who that guy was because I had missed that time period in the comics. I went from Hobgoblin and Craven to, you know, the Clone Saga. So it was like, oh, I got to backtrack and see who this Venom guy is. So, uh, but I, I, normally I would just be like, oh, come on. That's, that's such a, <laughs> like a millennial thing to say is, oh, I've been reading this since the beginning. I've read, and he says, I've been reading Venom comics, which, you know, I'm, I'm guessing he means, you know, this uh, issue here, which is Amazing Spider-Man 300, because this appeared 30 years ago, uh, but not Venom comics. Venom didn't have his own series until the mid to late 90s. So, uh, yeah, or mid-90s. So, yeah, he hasn't been reading Venom comics for 30 years. So I, I think I know what he means. But like I said, I normally would have been, like, a little bit more, like, oh, come on, dude, really? That's what you're, you're going to do this? You're going to play that game? Uh, but uh, then I was at Golden Apple the other day, and there was actually this, like, four-year-old kid that came in, and his mom was trying to find him something to buy, and he was looking around, and uh, she ended up getting him a Spider-Man book. But he was, like, there was a poster you know that venom uh, venomized poster that big cardboard thing that we looked at the web of venom uh that was hanging up in the store and the kid was just staring at it and the mom was like what is it with you in that character she's like every time we come in you just stare at him so once i saw that happen i was like all right donny cates you probably were infatuated with venom when you first saw him so at three years old i mean there's a something about the look of that character that is intriguing it's horrifying and there's something unique about it that makes you it draws the eye i mean todd mcfarlane and eric larson and, and mark bagley and ron Lim, all these earlier artists on the character did a great job establishing him and so, yeah, when I first read that line, it made me stop reading the interview, and I was like, okay, uh, I like this guy's writing, but I don't know if I like the guy. But then I was like, eh, it's whatever. He probably did read a Venom, you know, he probably did read Amazing Spider-Man 300, maybe some an uncle or his dad gave it to him, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, I don't think he understood it at three years old either. So uh, anyway, so I was reading that, and I was like, all right, like, move on, move on. But he talks about how he... Um, he says, like, there's not much to know about the the origin of the symbiote and the origin of Eddie Brock, and he thinks, he, he states that there's a lot of room there to flesh both of them out. And while I agree with him, he, I also don't agree with him, because if you read, you know, if you have been reading Venom for 30 years, you know that they've established things with the symbiote, you've established the, the Clintar race, in Planet of the Symbiotes, they talked about how the symbiote was a ca it was cast out by the other symbiotes on Clintar, and it was sent to Battleworld uh, to kind of exile it because of, you know, how it is and how it deals with emotion, it's different than all the other symbiotes, um, and so you do kind of get a backstory, you don't get every day of its life, sure, and same with Eddie Brock, but if you read Dark Origin, you see how he was as a young kid, and then as a teenager, and then high school, and then college, and then being a journalist, uh, leading all the up to the first time he meets spider-man so i disagree i think there are a lot of key moments in both of these characters the symbiote and eddie brock's history has been uh talked about even in the minus one issue that came out for the flashback marvel event that happened in like 1997 or something uh they do talk about these things and so i but but i also agree with them that there can be more that you can flesh out with both i mean the the, the alien symbiote could have lived a long, long time. So it probably has a lot more stories to tell about that. Eddie Brock, you could certainly squeeze in a few more stories uh, of his past, but I don't think it's as an open book as uh, Donnie Cates is stating here, unless he's planning on doing some soft rebooting or retconning or just hasn't read every issue, which, you know, who has, you know, other than me um, <laughs> and like one or two other people, uh, like my friend Jack Graziano in Florida probably has read every Venom comic. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I was reading this and I'm like, all right, not off to a good start with this interview, dude. Um, but then the second question was, how does the story impact the larger Marvel universe? And he says it's in a big way. So this is where he started to pull me in. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm digging what he's saying now because he drops the name of the, the book. It's called Venom. And the obviously we knew that, but the first arc of the first six issues is called Rex. And apparently that's this, this old enemy 
uh, this creature from like a thousand years ago. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit and speculate when we look at the artwork here in a second. But the first arc is called Rex, and it's the biggest, wildest, and most terrifying Venom story ever told. I promise you we're just getting started, is what uh, Donnie Cate says here. And he says, this will reach every corner of the Marvel Universe, and it'll turn out to be a problem that only Venom can solve. So I really like that. There has not really been a story in the Marvel Universe uh, yet. I mean, I know Venom is coming up, and that'll be a big thing, and that'll probably launch Venom into almost hero status in a way, because he'll be teaming up with like X-Men, Avengers, and all these characters to fight against the poisons and save Earth. So I think that'll elevate his status a little bit and probably put him perfect in this position for this book. Um, and, uh, and so to hear that it's a problem only he'll solve, I like that too. That's Rarely do they tell a story like that with Venom, where they're like, all right, we're going to make him the focus. We're going to put out a problem that Daredevil, Spider-Man, the X-Men, they just can't solve it, and they need Venom to do it. And I think that's cool. It, it allows for new types of stories to be told with Venom. So I'm into that. And then uh, the last question was, tell us your most memorable moment while working for Marvel Comics. And Donnie says, obviously, when he got the call to make Thanos when he took over writing that book, which I agree, that's when I first heard of him because my roommate Kevin, like, gushed about it, and he bought an original page of artwork from it, and I loved it. And now I want to buy an original artwork, uh, page of artwork from this book right here, uh, so I'm going to keep an eye out. Uh, Simon uh, uh, Kodransky, I believe his name, he's uh, done Spawn. He's a current artist on Spawn again. I love his stuff, and he did a page in this that I really want to buy, and I don't really buy original artwork i don't have the money but i really want to buy a, a page from this book uh, if i can uh, if it doesn't sell out so once I, that happened i that's what turned me on to donny cates and then reading damnation now i'm really digging his stuff there so i'm looking forward to this venom despite his first answer on these questions i'm still digging uh his vibe and i i'm looking forward i love his writing style uh so yeah he talked about how getting the job at marvel and, and being on thanos was a big deal he got it when he was at emerald city comic con so that was pretty cool to learn and then ryan stegman he gets to answer this one too he didn't answer the first two because i guess for space but he did get to answer this one and he said you know um him and his wife he, he him and his wife just had their first child and he got a call from editor steve wacker who uh you know uh said hey would you like to draw an issue of amazing spider-man issue 665 and he said that was my life's goal and i hit it and it was awesome and so he's drawn scarlet spider the the, the cane version he's drawn you know the started stuff in the venom ink storyline he's done so much stuff spider-man renew your vows like he clearly loves the spider-man character and i love his take on the character in the universe of spider-man so seeing him do something with Venom is going to be awesome. So let's take a look real quick at that artwork. Let's look at the first image here. Uh, the first one, there's only four in this book that they printed, but I do have a fifth image that was released on Bleeding Cool. So we'll look at the first five pages. These are the, the ink versions, and some of them just the pencil versions of uh, this work. So you're going to get a really good look at uh, Ryan Stegman's artwork, which is gorgeous. And the first page here, you're going to see there's a it's like inside a castle. It's probably set a thousand years ago. They did say that the, this creature is from a thousand years ago uh, so it's inside a castle there's all these knights are up against the door they're trying to hold it and the door's getting hit from the other side boom 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 like doomsday is coming right and you see this cool background image of the the symbiote stretching out so that's pretty neat i wonder if it's because the symbiote is showing these memories to eddie brock i think he's having a dream of this of some kind and i don't know how the symbiote would know this but again maybe the symbiote has some secrets that we haven't learned yet like donnie kate said so that'll be really interesting to learn uh, on the second page here you have the thing whatever's outside banging finally breaks through the door and you see it in the final two panels there you see it coming the, the tongue the camera's inside of its mouth uh which we saw on one of the venom covers recently something like that um, and you see the teeth coming in and closing down on the on the knights that are trying to stand against it and then the last panel is boom close up of an eye and bang we flash forward to new york i'm guessing um because i don't think it's gonna be set in san francisco and you have new york and you have the thunder going this time the thunder is making a crack a doom sound where there was crack a boom was the creature sound from the beginning uh so yeah i like to point like point out things like that in lettering i i like when letterers and artists and stuff pay attention to that stuff and it looks like Ryan Stegman drew these letters in there, so that's really cool too. Uh, but then you have Eddie Brock in his like little one-bedroom apartment, mattress on the ground. He's getting up. I'm pretty sure this is Eddie Brock, even though he doesn't really look much like him. He's got long hair. He kind of looks like Kane a little bit before Kane became, you know, shaved his head and became the good guy Scarlet Spider. Uh, but then you'll see here that there is a like it looks like the symbiote or something dripping or wet and it's leading eddie let's i'm pretty sure this is eddie it's leading him into the bathroom and so eddie goes out of the living room walk, walks his way to the bathroom you can see he has almost no furniture he's living dirt poor so if he does save the world and venomized he has not been rewarded for it in any way and looks like he's just like you know slumming it basically 
Um, and then he goes in the bathroom, pops a couple pills. He's uh, over the sink, looks up in the mirror. Uh, you, like I said, you see the long hair and stuff. Again, I'm assuming this is Eddie Brock. Um, I don't have any reason to think it's not right now uh, based on the symbiote looking thing going through the ground, but maybe it isn't. So uh, they have, that's, ish, that's page three and then four of him down the hallway and looking in the mirror. And then we have image five. Uh, and image five shows uh, there's like a note on the wall like in the mirror. Uh, someone left him a note. Maybe the symbiote left him a note and kind of is directing him to go outside. And then in that last panel, we see the, the thunder cracking one more time and he's crawling out the window to go outside. Uh, presumably not still naked <laughs> or in his boxers or whatever he's in. Um, uh, presumably maybe with the costume, but then again, maybe the symbiote is out there in the rain and maybe it's remembering all this or getting visions of those things that happened. Um, it, at that castle and that because it's still kind of tethered to Eddie like by one strand when he's laying in bed and it's just like sleeping all over the place uh, maybe that is what woke Eddie up is, is, is the symbiote's nightmare of something that it's seen before uh, but that would imply that the symbiote has been to Earth before too which would be interesting uh, or at least had, his, had an encounter with this uh, monster, which I'm assuming is going to be called Rex. So yeah, there's some speculation there on the storyline. I'm really digging the vibe of it, that the fact that it's lightning and it's raining outside, it's trying to add to that horror vibe, uh, trying to build that mystery going on. And, and again, reading, like seeing those five pages right there alone was like, hey, this seems neat. It's a threat that isn't possibly a symbiote. It's not like, uh, you know, someone else getting their own symbiote. It's not him spawning symbiotes. It's not like the same three stories I see them tell every single time with Venom. It genuinely seems like something new and that makes me excited for it and that makes me excited for what Donnie Cates is going to do and what and Ryan Stegman's artwork for sure. And at some point, I'm going to have to save up some money and buy an original piece uh, of, of artwork of a Venom comic. I have to. Um, I talked to Ebon Coella, and but until he's done finishing Venomized. He can't talk about it and he can't sell any artwork, obviously, but hopefully one day down the line I can buy a page from him or Ryan Stegman here. Hopefully I can afford it uh, because I would just love to have something like this on my wall just because the memories of doing this show, it would be a great tether to, to this time where we were, you know, talking about the movie, the comics and everything. So I might do that at some point. It might be a small investment I make into this show to have something cool to hang on the wall in the background. Something as something else cool, because I already have a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but you guys, let me know what you think. What do you speculate on the storyline of what this book's going to be? Do you have any theories based on the artwork? And you can check out the artwork at Bleeding Cool's link down below. And I'm also going to post them on my Facebook page um, probably by the time this video is up. So thank you guys very much for watching the show, as always. And I have some... Hopefully movie news coming up soon. If, if nothing pops up in the near future, we're going to do the, uh, the Scarlet Spider episode of uh, Exile Returns. We're going to talk about that graphic novel, um, which is in the um, uh, Separation Anxiety trade paperback now that you can buy. And then also we're going to talk about the NCAM technology. So uh, we have some stuff coming up. And I'm sorry for you know slow videos slowly pouring out this week, uh, but it's just been a slow news week for us. Uh, but I am on vacation next week, and hopefully some news drops, and I'll be on top of it for you guys, no problem. So again, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.